Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to give a review of the Rogue Invitational 2024 and how we think we got on. It is Tuesday today, so we've been back a day. We had a day uh, to chill yesterday. We're back in the office, so we're going to have a look over the events. There were six events at the Rogue Invitational. Number one was the deadlift, the max deadlift. So it was called the deadlift ladder. You picked the three weights and you had to go up basically each weight. So it was a raw deadlift, no figure of eights, no deadlift suits. I started off with 360 odd, I think it was. That felt really comfortable, felt really good. Um, and then I went up to 382-ish, I think it was. I forget what it was in pounds. It felt really quick off the floor. It got caught a little bit in my neoprene shorts, um, but I managed to lock it out. And I think that was actually a raw deadlift PB for me. So that was really good, really happy with that performance. I came, I think, seventh, seventh in that one, I think it was, or eighth, I can't remember. So I got a couple of extra points in that. That was my main aim in deadlift, to make as many points as I can and, and kind of collateral damage. And I think I did that quite well. Um, Big Tommy, what did we go for? Yeah, deadlift ladder for me. This was my, this was the event that was going to be my weak, weakest, obviously, coming back from the injury and stuff. I was having a go of pulling 400, well, 397 kilograms was the, uh, the weight that I probably think it was 380 and 397 or 382, 400, whatever it is, it's round about there. So, yeah, that was a goal for myself. Tried 410, but I knew it wasn't going to budge. And I only had like a minute to <laughs> prep prep the third lift as well. But yeah, 400 I was happy with. I'm not at the kind of top level deadlifting right now, but the confidence for me was to get Vegas out my head. You know, because I failed, I think, a 400 in a suit at Vegas and to pull it raw at the. Rogue Invitational three weeks after, it was uh, it was good. So it was a nice one too. Well, you failed four twenty. You got the four hundred. Sorry, I won't say that. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, no. Well, it was nice. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was nice just to get. I just wanted to, obviously, go into I, that first event at Rogue. You know, the big mindset for me. It was. I was kind of, I was more nervous and scared than I usually am. I I wasn't as pumped up. But anyway, four hundred kilogram to start the day off, and I think I came sick for something there. So. Uh, it was a, it was an all right first event to start. And I was very happy that that was the first event, and I'm very happy to get out of the way and was able to lift something reasonable in my standard, which was a uh, 400 kilograms. So it was good. Yeah, I think it was a good start to the day. Um, you know, a big shout out to Big Half Thor for winning the event as well. Don't know if you guys watched. He was trying to no negotiate a, a bit of a, a prize pot to go for the world record raw deadlift or something. I think that was quite funny. So. That was really good to see. Uh, but yeah, huge shout out to obviously Thor for smashing it. I think we all knew that Thor was going to pull the biggest deadlift there. But I think we started off pretty well. Um, and then it went on to event number two, which was the farmer's walk into the log press. So it was, it was 160 kilo farmers into 172 log press. So I was up. This was the one that we were doing with the girls, wasn't it? It was like a, uh, was a joint. Boy, girl, boy, girl, man, girl. Which was pretty cool. But um, So I was up, I think, eighth. Uh, third, I was third uh, group up or whatever. So for me, the farmers felt really good, felt quite fast with that. The first two reps and the log press felt nice. The log, I don't know, about, don't know if you found it, but I just found the log, the cleaning the log was a little bit off. Um, it sat a little bit lower um, for some reason, whatever it was, I'm not sure. But yeah, to, to complete it, I, I completed it fine. Um, maybe a little bit longer than I thought, but it's one of those things. Um, so yeah, I, my goal was just to get the, the reps, get it done and complete it as quick as I can, and I did that okay, and I kind of finished mid-pack. Big Tommy? Yeah, I was again one of the first groups out of here. Um, this was one of my events that I was really looking forward to. I'd really worked hard on uh, farmers and really pushed the log in training, a lot more reps, and you know, obviously with a new coach as well, you can do all this in training, but I wanted to see if it paid off in a, in an event. I, you know, This is my first time with Adam, so um, yeah, it was nice to... I mean, we had a bit of an issue with the start with obviously... You know, all, everyone gets about a minute and a half when they go out, and I, I only got like twenty seconds when when I walked through the curtains and stuff. So, yeah, it was good. I got my time off, but anyway, I didn't let that kind of bother me, and I ended up doing a fast farmers and a really fast free log, which you know I kept my hands on it each time as well, which usually I let my hands go. So it was nice to do that and just attack. It was nice to attack it as well and get that kind of confidence back as well. And yeah, then I you know cause I, let, I put all my trust in Alan to really get me ready for that event and. It worked and I ended up doing it in like 36, 35 seconds and 
coming top three in that, which was a very massive, a very big confidence boost and very happy with how my pressing was. And But also, more importantly for me, with how much faster I was on the farmer's walk in the kind of Olympic lifting shoes as well. So, Yeah, it was a really, I think it was a really good event, actually. It was, I think with, I yeah, that those two events, they were like the, the nervy ones almost. And it's always the first day you feel quite nervous. But on to like event three, that was the last event of day one, which was the, the stones in challenge. Um, onto the barrels. I managed to get four stones, which for me, that was a PB as well. I did it before, I didn't get the fourth stone. I, I broke the ground in the last one, but I just couldn't, I don't know, couldn't finish it off, which was a bit frustrating. I knew if I got it up into my lap, I would have been able to pop it up. I didn't have to hit the buzzer, which was fine, um, obviously. Yeah, so ever, this ever story, I mean, for me, I, I've only, I've done this once before against Martins and uh, yeah, again, you know, it always have in my back of my mind injury. When I was training with this, it's, uh, with a storm on my um, lap, it was a, uh, it was quite, it was painful in the gym. But I just wanted to get through it. You know, I don't, I didn't go like like I usually do with stones, one hundred percent. No, I went one hundred percent, but I didn't go as aggressive. I just wanted to make sure that I had no mistakes because if they flipped off the uh, platform as well, you had to pick them up. And I just wanted to get a nice clean run. And yeah, I was happy with how I did it. Um, I ended up getting a nice clean run. <laughs> Unfortunately, I celebrated and didn't do the buzzer. I don't know if it would have put me up another position or not, but I mean, I'm very still still very happy. Another top three, you know, coming back after the second event to get another uh, another top three in the in the last event of the day was I was very happy with that, and yeah, it was another confidence boost because like I could have said with the night one ninety kilogram natural stone. I'm not been known for lifting, being very good at natural stone, so it was nice just to yeah get a whole run done and eventually hit the buzzer after. Um, <laughs> A wee while celebrate. But I think it's just in the moment. You know, every single time I do stones, you always celebrate. And that stupidly was in my head. But yeah, after that event, I was made sure I did the buzzer all the time. But yeah, I was very happy with that. And like I said, I think the confident thing for me is knowing that I know that I can go faster as well and I can get out of like the third or fourth gear. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be stupid and make mistakes. And, you know, obviously I'm still learning with Aaron and he's still learning with me. And yeah, it was a very good <coughs> event for me. And ended up uh, finish, putting me in a decent position going into day two. So, so The winner of this one was... Half for Julius Beyonce. So big shout out to Thor again. Two event wins in day one. Forgot to say, big shout out to Thomas Evans for winning the, the log press event. That was he's, unbelievable. He smashed it, man. He just came out all guns blazing, big Thomas Evans. Amazing performance, I think, from big Tommy. Um, so, yeah, it was really good. Obviously, Mitchell Hooper as well smashed day, day one. He was in, I think, top three in all those events either second or, or third, whatever it was. So um, really smashed it. But after day one, I think you were joint, I don't know what it was, third, maybe, or, I don't know, I can't. Fifth or second, fourth, fifth, fifth. I think you were second. Fifth. I think it was, it was, I was close between second and fifth place anyway. I think I was two or three points off uh, podium. I don't know, somewhere like that anyway. So. I think I was about two points off fifth place. Um, so it was all to play for. I, I think we knew that like day two was probably a, a good day for us. Look, or I thought, I thought anyway. So at event number four, that was the first one. It was the, the power medley, the power drive medley. So we had the bale tote that we had to push into the 180 kilo hoose felt into the sled uh, arm over arm. So I, I was up second group, I think, in this one. I thought the bale tote was really cool. I enjoyed that. I got quite into a good rhythm with it and felt I could keep pushing it forever, to be honest. The hurt, the That's the farmer, our farmer blood in us boys. That was a ploughing championship that we did the other day, yeah. Then, then we had the, the Hoosa felt. So we did a ploughing championship, the Scottish ploughing championship was on a few, couple of weeks ago, so we went there, so thanks to all the farmers for giving us tips on how to roll a bale. But then we went into the Hoosa felt. I thought that Hoosa felt was really awkward. It was quite ah, it was small. quite small, wasn't it? So it must have been filled with like lead shot, so it was really compact and really small, normally with the Hoosa felts. Hoosa felt bags are a bit bigger and they kind of flop over. Well, we made it harder because it started on the floor as well. Mm. We usually start it up, so. Yeah, so that was nice. I put in a really good time in the first two. The arm over arm, it was it was quite heavy. Um, I should have wrapped maybe a bit quicker or whatever, but it's, um, I didn't do too bad in it. Just, just missed out completing it, which was a little bit annoying for me, but you came in. Yeah, Big this is an event I was actually shocked at. So I won this event, which... In all honesty, I did not expect to win. Um, I was going to give this a good go again, and this is where I knew that all the conditioning and aerobic fitness I've been doing in the gym, this is where I knew if it would be working or not. And uh, 
Yeah, the build talk, like Luke said, I felt like I got in a rhythm really easy. My body weight helped me as well. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel heavier or nothing either. It just felt like I was, yeah, just, just kind of pushing a bell basically. And then with the shield, I got lucky. I literally picked it up and caught it with my fingertips. And I just, again, it was, I think because it was small, I was able to uh, grab onto it easier. And then I was completed that. And then the arm over arm, yeah, it was just about completing it. I think, uh, you know, I did that very well. The good thing, I, I think the good thing for me, I had Evan, because I think Evan was lead, uh, ahead of me at this time. And I knew that, Evan's very, very fast at this. So I just knew I, I have to beat him. I have to beat him. And then when I was ending it, I was like, buzzer, buzzer, buzzer is the most important thing here. So yeah, it was so good to be able to complete it, hit the buzzer and walk off rel relatively like still not out of breath. And like that's where all the recovery had come into play. So yeah, I was very, very happy with, with my performance. I think I got 108 and I'd beaten four by like five, six seconds. So that was, yeah, that was the moment I was like, the, the stuff's working that I've been doing. So yeah, I was very, very happy with that. And that pushed me up the leaderboard a wee bit as well. So Yeah, you smashed that event. That was class to see. It was, uh, uh, it was really good. See a big Tommy back, man. That was class. A big win. Winning an event in the Rogue Invitational is no easy feat, especially with all the guys that are competing. It was a really kind of top lineup. So that was good. So that was event four. And then going into event five was the yoke escalator. So it was a 400 kilo yoke into the power stairs. A brutal event. It was tough, it was tough, yeah. Um, like, the, the yoke was okay, like, that wasn't really, a, it was like 400 kilos, so it's not hugely heavy. The first two implements for me felt okay on the power stairs, but then the third one, I don't know how heavy it was, was it? 275. 275. 275. Jeez, oh, that was like, that was so crushing for me. Um, it was really cool, I think, a huge shout out to Rogue, actually, because I thought it looked really cool, the five guys, Five against five. You know, the first uh, group of five went out and then we went out. And I thought that was class. I thought it looked really cool. But it was just really tough. I'm not sure I placed in this. I don't I don't I don't I don't remember, but it was it was it was okay. I, I completed it, which was my main goal was to complete the power stairs. Um I hadn't completed the power stairs at Worlds, I don't think last time we did them. So for me to do it was a was a good one. You did. Yeah, I mean I was just I think Huffer was like still a point or two in front of me. I was just making sure that I could keep keep in line with him. So yeah, and on the yoke, it's just for me, I was steady on the yoke. And then Power Stairs, he was ahead of me. And then the last one, I think we were so close to it, but he had just got the buzzer before me. But again, it uh, it made it interesting going into the last event because I think in the last event, um, he was two points in front of me going into the last event. So it was basically two points the whole competition after like the second or third event. So that was when I knew like, I needed to get a good performance here. And uh, yeah, that 5v5 thing for was a very cool setup as well. But um, that last day really, really took it out of my body. Like really, uh, the soul left the body after that event and I wanted to put it on. I needed a re really big recovery for the sixth event. Mm. And who, so it was Mitch that won that one, didn't it? Mitch won that one. Mitch yeah. won the fifth event. So that was, that was the only event I think that Mitch won, was it? Yeah. Um, but but consistency. Was so it? consistent all, all the way through. And um, yeah, again, a huge shout out to, to Mitch um, for just being a, a consistent war horse. So that was the fifth event. So the last event, the final event, which in my opinion was the best event of the day. Um, yeah, I mean, Luke was unbelievable at this event. I think, uh, I think, uh, I think I shocked me to see Luke. Fin I'm not saying that in a bad way, but like, you know, 190k axle is a uh, is heavy, and like, uh, obviously with Luke's bicep injury and stuff, I really thought like he'd hit the 170, but to hit that 190 was yeah. It was pumped, and I mean, then it, it helped him finish in an, an amazing position as well. But yeah, that was uh, one of the best things to see was him hitting that one night. Yeah, I was like, big boy's back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but yeah, it was good. It was, I think the, the most important thing in that event, though, I think, was the, the kettlebell. Because a lot of guys, you saw like a few of the guys like getting no reps or like at the start, and then same with some of the women as well. So you just had to be super just composed. Like before I went in, that's what Shane was saying. It's just just be composed. Don't there's no point rushing through this type of event. It's like if you can complete that event, then you're gonna get really good points. And yeah, the kettlebell felt good for me. The the dumbbell actually felt surprisingly quite nice. And then don't know about you, but when I got my hands on the first axe, I thought, oh, this is this is really nice actually. I thought, oh, this is nice, man. Um and it was it was no rotation in it or anything. So you had to and normally when I train, I don't put the bands on like you do. Um, but it just felt so class. I had a nice big pop. And then that last one just composed myself for the last one. And 
I just worked it up, man. Like it was a bit, a bit of butter, man. Hot knife through butter. So, uh, no, I was buzzing. It was good. But you, you did. Yeah, it, I mean, you? event six for me. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I was, I was happy with how it went. I mean, uh, I was just pretty buzzed. I knew that it was a very, very important event for me because I knew Evan. I was going against Evan again, and Evan is a very, very good presser. And if he had beaten me, I, he would have been, I think, in the same position as half four. And then I knew that me and Evan had to beat a half four. To thingy. And uh, in my head, I just thought Halfer wasn't going to get an act. So I just thought, like, with his pressing and stuff, I just thought maybe... So, yeah, the dumbbell, I think I was just a bit too adrenaline, but I knew I was going to get it. And dumbbell, looks at it, like looks at it, was, it felt all right. The 170 axle was fine. I should have maybe took 10, 15 seconds. But in my head, I thought Evan was going straight for the 190. And that's why I just went straight for it. I thought he was... When he got the 170 axle, I thought he, went, he ran straight to it. For some reason, in the corner of my eye, I thought that. But he never... Luckily... For me, he didn't get it, and I was fast. I don't know it was a fast enough. Um, what was it free? Was it free or two? yeah, free yeah. implements? Yeah, but I know I can get uh, one night yak, so I can I can get it all the time. But again, my body was pretty beat up there, and I was very very happy with how I did in the end. Um, I really thought once that event was over, once half hour had been, I really didn't know what the position overall because I thought when I seen half hour get that one seventy yak, I was like, oh boy. Has he got it faster than me? Has he got it faster than Evan? But um, yeah, in the end, I ended up coming joint second, which I don't, I've never been done at the road. Joint second, that's me three years in a row, second place at the road. And yeah, it's a massive, uh, it was a massive confidence boost for myself. I kind of, you know, I wasn't going to beat around the bush. There was no way I could really, I don't think, challenge Mitchell Hooper with the kind of the condition I was in. But I wanted to prove to myself that I could, you know, keep up with half or beat half or in this, 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 with the kind of three or four weeks prep I had of Aaron and it, yeah it was paid off as well and it was nice that people could see the difference in me I was more happy I was motivated to uh, be there I was more psyched up and I just kind of yeah it felt it felt happy and it was nice to get Vegas out of my mind because Vegas was always on the back of my mind even when I was there you know the first few events but it was nice to be able to get Vegas out of my mind and end Rogue and end a year on a high so yeah, I was happy with how I performed so I think it was a great result I think it was yeah, a fantastic. I think from both their points of views. I mean, fifth place is Top your highest, five, yeah. highest position. I mean, all you need to do on competitions is improve, and mm. <laughs> fifth place is a massive improvement from the last two years. Oh, definitely. It's the, you know, I'm behind, like, Mitch, you and Thor and Evan, you know, it's, it's no kind of, it's it's not an, an embarrassing people to finish behind. So, yeah, I was really happy, really proud of my performance. I, I think I've proven to myself and, you know, that I deserve to be at these shows. Like, I am one of the best in the world. I am top 10 in the world, easily. Um, and, you know, next year, I've said, Shane and I have said this year is like the warm-up. This is, it takes almost a year or so to to get everything kind of set in stone and stuff. And from from this, when I first started competing this year, I said 2025 is going to be a big year. And I truly believe that. The way that Tom and I are training, the way that we've upped everything, we're working so much harder. You know, that's, that's what counts. That's that's what we're doing. You know the the work that we're putting in, the time we're putting into the gym, it's going to be all all come kind of come to the, the kind of the top um, on the competitions next year. So I think it was a really good performance. Huge shout out to our coaches Shane and Aaron. I think yeah, I, 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 I big one to Aaron as well. Cause I, a lot of people look down at Aaron because they think he's just a, you know, he's not a Robbie he's Williams. not he's not a coach. But like you know, he's he proved there. You know, like. Back backstage, I'd, I'd never done any of this kind of warming up before, and you know, I felt so much better for it. I mean, we're winning an event that's pure cardio and pure conditioning. That four weeks ago, five weeks ago, if that was in Vegas, I would have collapsed to the ground and not even been able to finish it. So, you know, and also to to take over someone when you're in the middle of a competition prep and to only talk through Zooms and be like, this is what we have to do. It's yeah, it's pretty. Uh, is, I think it's a pretty good thing. I think it's hard, harder doing it now than it is in the off season. And now he's got a relationship with me. He's got a relationship with the team. He knows how I work. He knows he's now been to a competition as well. So it's going to be, I think, a much easier off season now because he understands everything. So yeah, it's a massive uh, shout out to him. And it's good that he knows all about you know the body as well. And yeah, very very smart guy. And I'm very confident going forward. It's going to be improving as well. And I'm very confident that my deadlift's going to get back to where it is. And you know, a lot of other things are just going to keep improving, so it'll be good. And I think, you know, just a, kind of a couple of shout-outs as well, you know, to the venue, the P&J Arena in Aberdeen, I think it was fantastic. I think, like, it's night and day compared to having it in Texas and Austin. 
I think Tarvin and this arena in the enclosed setting it's got the, the, the stalls and stuff no weather disruptions nothing it, unbelievable and I, speaking to some of the uh, the bill from Rogue, he was saying the guys at um, the P and J were so helpful, so like welcome. But I think, I think I think you look at the feedback of the fans as well. Every single fan that was there said it was one of the best shows they've been to. And I mean, you you, fast, you rewind to last year when they were saying about you know the weather of such a Rogue and stuff. I think yeah, I think it's a step in the right direction for Rogue. And I mean, every single fan left that place buzzing and happy. And you could see how many fans there were just at the expo that you know, came around the stall. So yeah, I think it's. I think it's a win-win, so I think it needs to go back there. Or Because, yeah, for me it was good. Every athlete loved it, and every fan loved it, and I think everyone that worked there as well loved it as well. So Yeah, and, and I think you know having the CrossFitters there as well was, was amazing. A you know, huge shout out to all the guys at CrossFit. They smashed it. It was always cool to kind of share the, the stage with the guys. You know, we did that five-person event. I think it was really good. I think the... I actually think the events, looking at the events when we first got them, you think, oh, it might it sounds quite light. But I think... The combination of everything, you know, farmers into log, power push, who she felt, sled drag, yoke into power stairs. It's like three events and one, two events and one, so. Yeah, so like, what I would say to anyone that's like, I thought it was going to be a light competition, but like at the end we were we were done. It was like every athlete there, you know, you look at Mitch, Mitch was done by the end of it. It was, um, I, I think it was a really good combination of events that Rogue put on. And when you're, when you're, combining these different that's where the excitement comes in you know it's like you could drop the yoke you could drop the farmers you're you're going into the log a bit more tired and fatigued so i i really like those type of events it wasn't it was a bit more exciting than some of the shows and i think a lot of the people watching it, i think shared that same kind of thought process the buzzer you know obviously there was a bit of kind of chat about the buzzer there's there's going to be a, it's a love hate thing but for me personally i still think it was quite exciting it's like Oh, you've got to reach for that buzzer at the end. You know, it's not you've got. Yeah, to it's your own, I mean, it's. Uh, I wrote my own fault for not doing it, but it's in your own control as well. That's the good thing about it is, you control it, so you're not waiting on a whistle or to end it or a time. It's like, you know, as soon as you do something, you've got control. Hit the buzzer, so you, it's, you're in control. You want as many things in that you can be in control of as well. And the buzzer is you're in control of. It's like if you hit that buzzer, the f fast you're going to be faster. If you dilly dally and celebrate and hit it last, then. You know, is that where stopwatches are so inconsistent, I think, as well? That, like, you could stop it, it still could add another second or take a second. Whereas, buzzer, as soon as you do that, you know you know exactly that you finished the whatever it is you're doing. So. And it's it's about as well, it's like everyone, we're always asking, how are we going to grow strong man? How is strong man going to be more accessible or more bigger, you know, on a big scale? You look at CrossFit, how big they are. It's a multi billion pound, you know, industry, the CrossFit industry. It's huge. So, how do we get strong man to that next level? Are we going to stand there with stopwatches? It's probably not the best way to do it. You see the crossfitters, they get their chips around their their stomachs, you know, that'll take their heart rate monitors, all this bits and pieces, I don't know, whatever it does. But, like, we need to grow strong, man. And, and I think, you know, looking at it this year at Rogue, they've really put it in the right direction, I think. Taking it to the UK, they know that they'll get a huge crowd in the UK. It's, it was massive. The stalls in the UK, and again, a huge shout-out to everyone. Thank you to everyone who came and, you know, came to the stall, kind of supported us by buying our clothing. We could see you in the crowd with the hoodies on. It was incredible to see. So that meant so much to us. But I think that's what we're wanting to do, is see the sport of strongman growing. Do we need a buzzer for it to grow? I, I don't know, but it's it's something it's they're trying. The right it's, 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 it's definitely something that we need to be trying. We need to be innovating, invigorating, you know, pushing forward, doing all these cool things. And I think having a company like Vogue on board is a huge... Um, step in the right direction so with that all that being said our competition season of 2024 is oh. now done right night guys but we will be back in the gym tom's going back in the gym after this video um i'm going back yeah, in I'm going to week. turkey hey tom's away to get turkey to get his butt implants done the bbl yeah. coming soon but yeah we're, we'll probably do a, a, re a recap of all the competitions this year chat them through um, it's been an awesome year. 2024 has been a good year for us. Um, really happy with how things have progressed. Some ups and downs that we'll go over. But obviously, Tom's world's strongest man. I'm Europe's strongest man. It's not been a bad year. Um, so with that being said, guys, thank you so much, as always, for all the support, all the nice comments that you've done over the weekend. It means an awful lot to us. We hope that we've proved that we are putting in the work, that we have turned up in shape. 
that's what we want to do for you guys. Every competition we're doing next year, that's what we want to do. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. What do they do, Tom? Stay safe, man. Stay spicy. And please, guys, don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Ding a little ring.